The Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, it's well, not about maybe race. Maybe well, they yeah. no, consider Jews it's about, a different it's a, race. But it's it's not about race. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. Are those braids too tight, Whoopi? What the hell's going on with you? The Holocaust wasn't about race? If you don't remember, that was Whoopi Goldberg earlier this year when she sparked outrage across this country, I'd say across the globe, when she claimed the Holocaust was not about race. What an anti-Semitic remark. <sighs> she got suspended from The View for, what, a couple days. She made an apology, formal, and everybody let it go. That was back in the springtime. Well, guess what Whoopi did again? <laughs> now in a brand new interview over the weekend, she repeated the exact same claims. Then Tuesday, when everybody got back from vacation this week, there was tons of backlash. So Whoopi again issued a new apology. But she's not canceled. No one's ruining her life. She's not thrown off that show permanently. There aren't crazy conservative Jewish folks out in front of her house trying to burn it down. No, nothing's happening. Now, during the interview with the Sunday Times, Goldberg once again lamented the outcry that her comments from back in April or March, I think that was, trying to defend herself while still claiming that Jews were not victims of racism during the Holocaust. Again, we know where she's going with this. The only people that have ever been affected by racism in America are black people, right? No one else. The Asians are never, no. Mexicans, Jews, whites, nope. Just the black race in her mind. She says, quote, remember who they were killing first. They were not killing racially. They were killing physical. They were killing people they considered to be mentally defective. Then they made this decision. In her apology on Tuesday, Goldberg said, I tried to convey to the reporter what I had said and why and attempted to recount that time. It was never my intention to appear if I was doubling down on my hurtful comments, especially after talking with and hearing from people like rabbis, old and new. I believe the Holocaust was about race, and I am still as sorry now as I was then that I upset, hurt, and angered people. My sincere apologies, especially to everyone who thought this was a fresh rehash of the subject. I promise it was not. We'll get to that in a minute with our next guest. But speaking of apologies, Google had to respond to a controversy surrounding the definition of the word Jew that appeared as a result on the popular search engine. rather. Now, why did they have to apologize? Well, <clears throat> up until a couple days ago, if you went on Google and you just did a simple word search of Jew, the word was defined as a very offensive verb, again, until they took it down and apologized. The top definition, because you know how you get different results when you search, right? And there's pages and pages. But the top search result and definition when describing the word Jew was this, until they pulled it. To Jew, as to bargain with someone in a miserly or petty way? What? What? with the origin being in reference to old stereotypes associating with Jewish people trading and money lending. Again, that's Google putting that out there. The officials apologized on behalf of the search engine for posting it, saying, quote, our apologies. Google licenses definitions from third-party dictionary experts. We only display offensive definitions by default if they are in the main meaning of a term. As in, this was not the case here. We have blocked this and passed along feedback to the partner for further review. Mm -hmm. I wonder um, when people do certain searches on Donald Trump, Republicans, conservatives, George Floyd, other things, what kind of results you get? And you're telling me they don't monitor those results and adjust what comes up in the first page? They do. I call BS on Google. Anyway. The FBI's hate crime statistics for 2021 showed that Jews remain the largest target of religious-based 
hate crimes. But the overall stats likely undercounted the overall scope of hate crimes against them because a lot of stuff hasn't been reported to the DOJ and the FBI. The stats show that Jews were the target of 324 hate crimes in 2021, but overall reporting of hate crimes by local law enforcement and the FBI, which was voluntarily dropped, went down from 81% to 63. The total number of anti-Jewish hate crimes reported last year dropped from 2020, but many jurisdictions with large Jewish populations did not report any data, including New York City. And remember, we reported before that an article came out and proof showing that the FBI has not been reporting actual crime stats because, of course, it will make <clears throat> our case that the whole defund police has caused an issue with policing in our country. So the FBI and the DOJ, the stats they've been putting out the last two, three years, they've been pulling the numbers down to lie to us. Joining us now to talk more about Whoopi, Google, the hate crimes, and what's happening to Jews in this country and around the world. President of the Zionist of America, Mort Klein. Mort, welcome to the program for the first time. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's begin first with the double standard. If a, and I'm not going to use politics and say Democrat, Republican. If a conservative were to say what she said back in February, and then, yes, it sounds like you're doubling down, and then make a second apology, do you think they'd be forgiven so quickly and easily? I mean, this story went away like poof. <laughs> No, the cancel culture would destroy any conservative that made now uh, an inappropriate uh, statement concerning race or many other issues. And here, uh, Whoopi Goldberg has now twice uh, claimed that the extraordinary six-year massacre of six million Jews is just is not about race. When the Germans, in writings, in speeches, mm -hmm. on TV, on radio, repeatedly said, "We want to destroy the Jewish race," the Jewish race. Uh, and she says, this is simply white on white violence. White on white violence, first of all, diminishing the Holocaust of six million lost innocent Jewish souls, right. including most of my own family. I was born in a displaced persons camp in Germany. I lost almost all my aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents. Mm -hmm. And she calls it white on white violence. No, this woman uh, has claimed she learned something from the first time she spoke. <laughs> she obviously learned nothing. Uh, and uh, I, I've, if anyone had made this type of egregious statement about any other uh, racial issue, they would be off the air in about one minute. Yeah. And she should be removed from television. No kidding. She's not ignorant. She's also hateful. Real brief on this one. Uh, what do you make of Google's excuse for that mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> definition of Jew on their first page on the top? Outrageous. They call Jews miserably, you know, cheap. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, Jews are the most generous, most charitable people in America. They give on an average of 10 times the amount that non-Jews give to charities, universities, museums, libraries, medical research. Uh, and to have this definition of uh, that Jews are simply cheap and, and other anti-Semitic uh, statements about them is, is uh, an intentional, egregious statement. Uh, they should find out who allowed this, and that person should be fired immediately. If an organiza another organization gave them this definition, they should be immediately exposed and, and no one should have anything to do with them. Yeah, tell this us who it was. was. Unintentional. Yeah, the left will be doing that to the conservative <laughs> folks. Uh, two more quick things. Let's head overseas. We just heard that um, Benjamin Netanyahu is back in office. That was quick. I mean, they went for a more liberal prime minister for how many months? And now Bibi's back in. What happened over there? <laughs> Actually, they voted for Naftali Bennett last time, uh, who was initially, who was for a long time a right of center guy who moved to the left after he was elected. So the Israeli public, after 75 years of constant terrorism, of constant wars from the Arabs against Israel, uh, in fact, right now, Israel suffers seven terrorist attacks every single day for the last year or so. Uh, and they really are getting sick and tired of this. And so they want, they elected a strong uh, government right of center that mm -hmm. says we're going to be much tougher on uh, security and deterrence to, to, to uh, terrorism. Uh, uh, they want death penalty for anyone who kills a person, kills a Jew or an Arab, death penalty. They want uh, to deport anyone who's convicted of terrorism after his, he, he serves a sentence, is thrown out of the country, is deported, uh, and, and such. Well, so this stuff sounds similar to what positions. we're looking for back here at home, <laughs> as far as what conservatives want for America. This sounds similar to what conservatives want for America. Similar that, values. That's a, uh, 
Yeah. That's a very right? valid point. It's exactly yeah. what America wants, what America should be. There's nothing extreme about these positions. And remember, unlike America, Israel suffered from terrorism from the Arabs and Islamic world for 75 years right. uh, and, and, and constant wars. So they would like this to end, to be much stronger, much tougher. That's why they democratically elected a strong right of center government to try and protect Jewish people from Arab and Islamic violence. Mark, just a few seconds left, but one more. I see that those uh, more conservative Israeli lawmakers are condemning the EU, saying that they've committed illegal actions by helping to fund Palestinian infrastructure projects. Talk to us about that quickly. Uh, uh, European Union uh, are funding radical extremist anti-Israel NGOs who call Israel an apartheid state, uh, even though 10% of the, the parliament of Israel are Arabs, they say Israel is committing genocide uh, against Arabs, even though the population of Arabs have gone from 150,000 to 2 million over 75 years. It, of course, there's no genocide. So they're promoting groups that lie about Israel and harm its reputation with lies. Mm. They're also funding illegal uh, structures in Judea and Samaria that is controlled by Israel. They're funding this. There are 5,500 structures that were built in this past year illegally, they're being funded. They're promoting that Jerusalem should be the capital of the, Palest of the, of the Palestinian state, mm. uh, when Jerusalem's never even mentioned the Koran. No, uh, it's insane. Uh, when the majority of people are living in Jerusalem since 1850 have been Jews. So this is a Jew hatred of the worst sort, and this has got to stop by the European Union. I'm glad to see Bibby back. I'd like to see Trump back, because those two guys together, they're good for both countries. Mort Klein, President, Zionist of America. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on. Appreciate you. ZOA.org. Thank you very, very much. Yep. You take care.